My name's Heather and I'm inviting you to wait in the darkness with me. This is Holy Saturday, the Jewish Sabbath, but today's reflection actually begins at dusk on Good Friday. The reading is from Matthew chapter 27, verses 57 to 61. As evening approached, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body, and Pilate ordered that it be given to him. Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and placed it in his own new tomb that he'd cut out of the rock. He rolled a big stone in front of the entrance to the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were sitting there opposite the tomb. Will you come with me in imagination? Sit down beside the two Marys and try to share what they're feeling. Their hearts are broken. Their hopes and dreams dashed. Their beloved teacher and friend is dead. Yes, Jesus is dead, dead and buried. All they can do now to show their love is to go home and prepare spices and perfumes, but they'll have to wait till the Sabbath is over before they can go and embalm his broken body. Some of you will know Bach's wonderful St Matthew Passion, which he wrote to be sung and played as part of the Good Friday service in St Thomas's Church, Leipzig, on the 11th of April, 1727. It ends where we are at this moment, with the Marys at the tomb of Jesus, lamenting. The choir sings, In tears of grief, dear Lord, we leave thee. Lord Jesus, fare thee well. I used to wish that the music ended with a promise of the resurrection to come. But I've come to understand that it's very important that we, like the Marys and Jesus' disciples, have a day to mourn, to wait, to grasp the fact that Jesus really died. It really was his dead body that was laid in the tomb by Joseph of Arimathea. It's ironic that it was Jesus' enemies rather than his followers who remembered that he'd said he would rise on the third day. They asked Pilate to seal the tomb and set a guard so that the disciples couldn't come and steal the body and tell people he'd risen from the dead. Why do we need to reflect on the fact that Jesus really was dead. If, as some have tried to suggest, Jesus only fainted and revived in the cool of the tomb, that would turn the resurrection into a sort of conjuring trick. To defeat the power of sin and death. To be the perfect sacrifice to atone for our sin. To open to us the gate of eternal life to demonstrate that the power of God is mightier than the forces of darkness. Jesus had to die. But what was happening while his dead body lay in the tomb? In John's Gospel, we read that after Jesus cried out, it is finished on the cross, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. There is an ancient tradition based on various verses in the New Testament and the Psalms that while his body lay in the tomb, Jesus went in spirit to the gates of Hades, the abode of the dead, and led out into freedom the spirits of all those from earlier times who had trusted and followed God. There are some wonderful medieval paintings and icons which portray this which is described as the harrowing of hell. And if the death of Jesus on the cross is the pivotal point in human history, doesn't it make sense 
that its effects would reach back as well as forward in time. Will you take this day of waiting in the darkness to delve more deeply into what it means that Jesus died for you and me? I love these words from the book of Hebrews. Since we have flesh and blood, he too shared in our humanity so that by his death, he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by their fear of death. The sting of death has been drawn. Tonight in many churches, including our All Saints Church, an Easter vigil will be held. You might like to do, as our brothers and sisters in Ukraine, along with worshippers in other Eastern Orthodox churches, will be doing, waiting in darkness as midnight approaches, and then at midnight lighting your candles and declaring, Christ is risen, hallelujah. Let's pray for them now. Lord Jesus, as your people in Ukraine wait in darkness tonight in their beautiful churches, and then at midnight declare your resurrection in a blaze of light. Will you light a flame of hope in their hearts? And may they know your joy and strength and the peace that passes understanding in these dangerous times. And for ourselves, Lord Jesus, we pray that we may more fully grasp the truth that you died for us and share tomorrow in the joy of your resurrection. Amen.